Okay, we retain interesting integral. We've got the integral from zero to infinity of x squared times e to the minus four x squared dx. Okay, we had an interesting suggestion in the comments the other day from a dandap on this one. The problem, I did change it a little bit. I mean, this was actually part of another problem. And also what I did was, I decided to multiply in a four here. Originally in the, in the one we did in the other video, it was just a one. Just thought this might make it a little more interesting. The suggestion from a dandap on this one was that we could actually do this using Feynman's trick. And it was pretty interesting. I hadn't really thought of it that way. So what we can do on this to parameterize it is we'll create some function that we'll call f of a, let's say. And what we want to use is the Gaussian integral or something very similar. The Gaussian integral will just be the integral from zero to infinity e minus x squared dx. And how I want to parameterize it is we'll just do the parameter like, kind of like we have it right here. I'll create the a right here in front of the x squared. And I think the reason this is going to be useful is first, if a is one, we just get back exactly the Gaussian integral and that has a known value. That's just going to be square root of pi over two. So we can come back and use that later. And we're going to have a way to relate back to our original problem because here like a value is four. Although notice what I've done is we set this up differently because I left out the x squared. So before moving on to the next steps, I just want to solve this for a value in terms of a. So let's just kind of rework this. So what I'm going to do is let's rewrite this. I want to set this up for a substitution. So what I can do is write this as square root of a times x all squared dx. And then we can do a u substitution on this right here. We'll just set our u equal to square root of ax. Then take derivative du is going to be just square root of a dx. And so what I can do to set up this du is let's just multiply in square root of a right here. And then we'll multiply it in front just so we're not changing it. And then go ahead and substitute on this. So what we're going to have is one over square root of a. Everything, because we're just multiplying a constant on the x, the bounds stay the same. So we're still going from zero to infinity. This is all going to transform into just e minus u squared du. But again, this is exactly the Gaussian integral. This has that value again of square root of pi over two. So what we can do, all we, so all we need to do is just multiply square root of pi over two times one over square root of a, and we have our value for this. I'm just gonna write it a little different. Let's write this as square root of pi over two, and I'll write this as a minus one half. And then for the next step, what I wanna do is let's come over here and let's differentiate this, but differentiating with respect to a. And now what we can do is we can do this on both sides. This is a lot like another video I did where I think we had something like one over x squared plus a squared, and we just differentiated it on both sides. So kind of the same idea as that. So when we do this, using Feynman's trick on it, what we'll do is I want to differentiate inside the integral sign with respect to a here. So we'll do it as a partial. And on the right side, I'll just go ahead and differentiate. This first part's a constant, so we'll have square root of pi over two in front. Use power rule on this. We'll have a minus one half come out, and this is going to become a minus three halves. Then maybe I'll just clean this up a little bit and multiply this through. So we'll have minus square root of pi over four a minus three halves. Here, let's go ahead and do this derivative. Now, what's gonna happen first is, because we have e in the base, we just get back the whole thing. So that's the first part, we have e minus ax squared. But then what we wanna do is, we need to use chain rule on all this stuff, but with respect to a. So all that's gonna happen, derivative of a is just one and the other stuff comes out, so we're gonna have minus x squared. But what I'll do is, let's take this minus sign and bring it out front. And then here, the thing to notice is this piece right here, and let me kind of make this clear because that plus sign looks like we're adding it. So let's write this. Let's actually reorder it so we can get it to look exactly like our problem. So we're gonna have, so we'll have this x squared up front here. And now at this point, I don't really care about f prime a because we've really just created this f of a function in order to generate the thing we wanted, this right here. So what I'm gonna do is kind of abandon that and we have this new function here. But what I want to do is let's multiply by minus on both sides just to get rid of the minus signs hanging around. So then this way, what we have here reflects exactly our problem here. We can put a different label on it. We can call this like G of A, let's say. And so by doing that, all we need to do for our solution is our solution is just going to be G of four because we said our A value here is going to be just four. So all we need to do to finish is just plug a four into our equation that we created right here. So let's just do that. We want to find g of four. So plug in, we're gonna have square root of pi over four, and then we're gonna have four to the minus three halves. 
then let's just simplify this a little bit. So I think maybe let's bring it into the denominator and have this four cubed is 64, one half is gonna be squared. So this thing here is gonna be an eight, but then multiplying eight times four gives me 32. And so if my final solution on this, we just get square root of pi over 32. And so going back to that other video, we had the case where the a value was one. If you plug a one in here, that's pretty easy too. We would have just square root of pi over four. One thing I think I forgot to mention on this is the way we did it in the other video was we did, I think it was u substitution integration by parts. That's kind of the more straightforward way on that. This is probably more interesting. I don't know, you can do either way, do whatever you gotta do. <laughs> anyway, you can do it either way. I kind of prefer this way just because it's more fun. Anyway, thanks again to Adanda for the suggestion. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.